When you start your new website, you're really proud of it. It's like a newborn baby. And you want to be like Mufasa and invite the whole world to your kingdom so you can share your pride with everyone. And everything the sun touches in this kingdom is yours. Except that dark shadowy patch over there. That's called Facebook and it is forbidden. But as you look out over your kingdom, you realize it's actually a ghost town. And you are the mayor. And you've been tasked with turning this ghost town of a blog into a thriving metropolis. All right, so you're the mayor of a new town and you've got to bring people here. And when you are starting a blog, it's exciting. You feel like, all right, this is my little corner of the internet and I'm going to build it out. And then you get started and it's like, there's nobody here. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing here. And it's so frustrating. You're doing a ton of work. You're seeing no results at first and your brain is on fire trying to find ways to bring you back down to the status quo where you were not achieving things. So this video is all about ways to completely cut that out, cut out the possibility that you're not going to see this thing through to the end. The first thing I want to point out is how good it is that this ghost town period of websites actually exists because it cuts out everybody that won't stick it out. Everybody that's not 100% serious about this business is going to give up in those early days. And that's not going to be you because we're going to help you through that. And the first way that you get through that is by making sure that you've nailed down the niche for your first website. The number one reason that we see people quit and give up on their website before it's even had a chance to take off is they get scared. They get, they've worked on it, they've done a lot of work, and then they think, oh, well, I must have picked the wrong niche. Um, it's going to be too hard to monetize. Uh, nobody's coming yet. And because they think they may have picked the wrong niche, because they're so full of doubt and fear, they give up and they take their website down before it's even had a chance I, to bring anybody I've there. seen this so at least a dozen times this month yeah. where somebody said, oh, I was two or three weeks in, and then I realized it's going to be too hard to monetize this. Or I realized after writing two articles, I don't know anything about this topic. So you better be sure that you've picked the right piece of land. So how do you pick the right niche? First thing that I'm going to look at before anything else is, um, is there enough traffic to be had? This to me is more important than the competition. Just like, right. is this a market I want to be in? Uh, is it going to be worth having this traffic? How am I going to monetize the traffic once I get it? You know, is this a really good demographic and a nice clean topic so I could do well on ads and get a high RPM? Is this something that's really product focused and I could do well with affiliate links? Are there awesome products on ClickBank? I'm looking at what it could become in the end to look at that monetization and see if it's even going to be a, a business that I want to have when I build it. Yep. Another thing that we're going to look at is just overall trends and seasonality. You're just going to go to Google Trends and you're going to do a search. So think about if you wanted to make a website about restoring old cabins or old historic buildings. Okay. You just go to Google Trends and you type in restoring historic buildings and you're going to see is there seasonality. I mean, a little bit of up and down throughout the year is pretty normal. Most niches are going to have an on season and kind of an off season. But are you seeing major peaks and major valleys? Now, again, that's that's not the deal breaker, but it's something I'm going to check out before I do a ton of work on this website. All right. I want to share with you our favorite tip by far for making sure you don't have any excuses three or four weeks from now to convince you to quit. And that is to create your hit list really early in the process. It's easy to think of an idea, register a domain, start cracking on it, writing an article, and then you fizzle because you realize I didn't really do a very good analysis <laughs> on this website. It's not the best niche to be in. And so I used to be that guy. I used to own like 60 domains because Saturday morning I think, oh, I want to make one about Frisbee. Oh, I want to make one about <laughs> lacrosse. And it gets exciting and you just register too many domains yeah. that you're never really going to do anything with. 
So if you take the time to create your hit list, you can do much, much better. If you're a Project 24 member, be sure to go into action step eight. We have a video tutorial on how to do this, but also that I think is really helpful is we will give you some of our hit lists for websites yeah. so you can see like exactly what this should look like in the planning phase. Doing the hit list really gets you a few things. One is it helps you to assess the competition for the website. Every time that we come up with a topic for an article, we then go Google that topic and we see what else is out there. What kind of a post do I need to write to win this one? That com competitive analysis for your niche is going to be key. But now that we know that we want this niche, we've staked our claim, we know we want to be the mayor of this ghost town and we're going to build it into a metropolis, darn it. We've got to now step back, get at that thousand foot view and decide what we want that website to become. So we got to get a thousand foot view. Darn it, Jim, I'm not hiking up there again. Whew. Now that we're up here at our 3000 foot vantage point, we have the ability to look at things in a totally different light. When you start your website, most people are down there. And from down there, everything looks small. Everything looks really crummy. But from up here is beautiful. You can see what this town could become. And that's what we want you to do with your website. Take a step back and look at what it could be and what it's going to be once you've built it into that thing. Now, what that means is thinking about two things. First, what would it look like to have the most helpful website on the internet in your industry? And number two, what would it look like to be the pillar website on the internet in your industry? And we'll dive into those two things a little bit deeper and give you some really good examples of what that might look like for you. So from this thousand foot view, we can think about what would be most helpful for your industry. Forget all practicality, forget how am I going to get there and just think what would be really, really helpful. Yeah, imagine you have a million dollar budget and yeah. 10 years to work on it. What could just blow everything out of the water in your industry? We're just. Yeah. We're just going to what we could do, and later we're gonna talk about initial steps to get there. That's right. So think about if you have a website that just reviews vacuum cleaners. Let's just go really basic, Amazon niche review type website. What would it be like if you went and bought the 10 best vacuum cleaners on the market, and then on your own carpet at home, you put mud and sand and dirty cat litter on the ground, and you said, which one works the best? And you set up an in-home demo. How helpful would that be to somebody versus somebody who consolidates Amazon reviews? Boring, <laughs> so lame. Yeah. Like everything that Google's doing, we did our video about algorithm updates and how to avoid getting hit in the future. There's no question this is where Google is heading. It wants more authenticity, more experience, real content. And guess what? That's what your users want also. So it's good for all of us. So one thing that I did on improvephotography.com in the early days, I put my cell phone number all over the website, my personal cell phone number. And I was just like, hey, if you're ever on a photo shoot and you're, you know, your flash doesn't work or you ever want to buy a lens and you're not sure which one to get, just call my cell phone. <laughs> and I got, it's nuts. I got so many comments about it. For years, people would be like, what, you're crazy. And it's like, it didn't hurt anything. I probably got, you know, two calls a month, really. But it helped so much for somebody to come to it and feel like, what is this site? This is crazy. It's so helpful in the way that you do it. Or let's say that you made a website about college choice. How could you be really helpful? Well, how about rather than just giving people the information about, well, if you're interested in this, these are, here's a list of good schools. If you're interested in that, here's a list of good schools. That's what everybody's doing. What if instead you made a tool that walked people through the decision tree? They make one choice and then boom, it gives them the next question and it's just eliminated a whole list of schools that don't meet their criteria. And then you ask, they, you ask them the next question and boom, it eliminates a whole nother list of schools. And in the end, it's gonna give them a list of 
the five to ten schools that meet all of their criteria. Yeah, I think, and that could be totally go viral among teenagers oh, yeah. and stuff. Picking a college, you know, you have like what college fits your your personality. You know, we see on Facebook and stuff, and then you can share your result after. It's like, oh, this tool says I should go to wherever. You know, like it. Ah, it's just so much better than just like best colleges under ten thousand dollars a year. Right. Best colleges in Alabama. It's just, ah, you can create yeah. something so much, just vastly more helpful. You know, let's say you want to do something about bread making. You're interested in that. Well, you could just be another recipe about how to make bread in a bread maker and just put them out there. You could be another website that summarizes mm -hmm. Amazon reviews. Or you could just go get three bread makers. So you have three different machines and how they work. And then you can just go get recipes on Pinterest and just like be the fact checker and be like, yeah, this one, no. Yeah. I tried <laughs> this, this recipe, work. followed it, put it in the tried bread it on maker. three different bread makers, <clears throat> don't make this one. And then you're, it's like you're a review site for recipes. That'd yeah. be cool. That'd be awesome and <laughs> extremely helpful. Now remember, this is like the 1,000 or maybe 3,000 or 10,000 foot view, depending on the idea that you have and where you are right now on your website. This may be so far in the future. But by taking a step back and having this vision of how helpful your site can be will give you not only the motivation to stick it through this ghost town phase of your website, but it's also going to give you the direction to head. You're probably going to have to shift direction a little bit here and there over the next several years, but it gives you an end goal in mind. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're building up a ghost town, like you're the mayor of this place, which is kind of our metaphor for this video, like you better have a plan for where the streets are going to be, even if there are no streets at all. You can't today. build the five star hotel and resort until you have electricity, water and sewage in the town. Absolutely. You know, if you're making a website about adoption, you know, like if you had three million people coming to your website every month, could you become an adoption agency? You know, if you had three million people coming a month, could you charge $50 for consultation on, on how to be successful with, with adoption and have a 24 hour helpline for when you're scared, stressed or whatever to call into somebody who knows? Yeah. What could it become in the future? All right, so that's how to make your website the most helpful. Now we're gonna look at the other question. What would it look like if you were able to build this blog into a pillar in your industry? Think about anything that you're into. You could probably name three blogs that are just the key ones in that niche. And the reason we want you to think about that is to see what things are they doing. Not because we want to copy exactly what they're doing, but we want you to have a little bit of a vision for what it would look like and what it would take to become that. That's exactly right. And notice that we separated the pillar in the industry from the most helpful in the industry. There are many websites out there that are pillars in their industry oftentimes because there isn't something else out there more helpful. Yeah, and Their content is just the best out there. Yeah, you could also be the most helpful but not really a pillar in the industry yet because you're just too small. Maybe yeah. you have this amazing tool but you have like 10 blog posts on your site so nobody's gonna find this amazing tool. They're two different, uh, two different analyses. And so becoming the pillar in the industry often takes a lot more time, a lot more content, um, tools, resources, and usually a fair amount of authority and expertise. Go look at the pillars in your industry and what is it about them that make them pillars. And again, add that to your 1,000 or 3,000 foot vision of what your website's going to become. All right, so we've walked you through a process with one goal in mind. Make it impossible for you to say three weeks from now any excuse other than just I was lazy. I didn't follow through. We want you to have done enough planning to feel confident about your idea that it has amazing potential that you know you can make it work um, to get started and then there's just no excuse left. Right. Once you have that vision, you treat it as the foregone conclusion. This is what the website's going to become someday. End of story. I don't get to quit. 